The rules of sports car building are surprisingly simple. It has to look good on the outside, look good on the inside. It has to ride well and handle well. So, how does the Lexus SC430 do? It's none of those things, which is quite an achievement because most cars manage to get at least two of those four right. I mean, just look at this wood. That is the car equivalent of a giant cabinet for your telly. And it's not like Lexus only had a miserable changing room budgets of about 500 quid to play with. They had bucket loads of cash to spend. And they still came up with a, a Mexican hacienda. When it was first launched, the SC430 came with run-flat tyres, which, of course, are virtually solid. Fred Flintstone had a similar tyre setup on his car. And believe me, it made for a hard ride. Well, quite recently, Lexus waved the white flag and they replaced the run-flat tyres with ordinary ones and softened the suspension. But not enough. Not by a long way. The problem is, it's not really hard and communicative enough to be a sporty chassis, and it's certainly not comfortable enough to be a relaxed cruiser. It's a dreadful compromise. It's horrible. I don't like driving this thing at all. At least the engine people did their job properly. 282 admirably smooth horsepower. It is a good engine. And so's the stereo, actually, once you've finally waited for the electric gates to open. And the roof could have been good, too. Look at that. One minute it's got a roof, the next minute it hasn't. Brilliant. Hasn't got a boot, either, now. It's all full of roof. Utterly, utterly useless. Mind you, they are leather. It's got a label, which will, I suspect, be left on. The thing is, Lexus can and do make good cars. It's just that when they came to make a sports coupe, it all went horribly wrong. They didn't follow the simple rules, which is a shame, because if you do, anybody can make a good sports car.